Special Envoy Hans Grunberg initiates consultations on his new peace framework. Western media bias over Ukraine crisis turns objective journalism into myth. Government forces liberate new areas in Sada and inflict heavy losses on Houthi militia. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News with me, Rana Sweden. The United Nations Special Envoy to Yemen, Hans Grunberg, started a series of consultations in Amman, Jordan. Grunberg stressed the importance of an inclusive political process that reverses the dire humanitarian crisis and provides opportunities and space for dialogue at multiple levels. More details are in the following report. The United Nations Special Envoy for Yemen, Hans Grunberg, started a series of consultations in the Jordanian capital, Amman, bilateral meetings with leaders from the General People's Congress Party and delegations from Islah, the Yemeni Socialist Party and the Nazarist Unionist People's Organization will take place. Over 100 Yemeni men and women from political parties, the security and economic sectors and the civil society will be consulted over the next few weeks in Jordan and in Yemen. The special envoy will continue engaging with the government of Yemen and the Houthi rebels as well as with regional and international stakeholders. Efforts will also be made to consult the broader Yemeni public, including youth, to ensure the new United Nations framework reflects Yemeni's interests and aspirations. Gramberg reiterated that the current time is difficult for Yemen, and the conflict approaching its eighth year and continues to exacerbate the suffering of civilians, threatens regional stability and undermines prospects for a peaceful solution. The United Nations Special Envoy for Yemen stressed that there is an urgent need to establish an inclusive process to reverse the direction of the destructive path in Yemen and to provide opportunities and space for dialogue at multiple levels. Building on the Special Envoy's prior engagements, the consultations will focus on identifying immediate and long-term priorities along political security and economic tracks. Support for the United Nations envoy was voiced by the United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who affirmed that there is no military solution to the conflict in Yemen. Blinken, as well, welcomed Grandberg's launch of inclusive consultations. He asked all parties to take advantage of this new opportunity for dialogue. The United States welcomed the launch of inclusive consultations by UN Special Envoy for Yemen, Hans Grunberg. The State Department noted that the consultations provide a valuable opportunity for Yemenis to discuss a renewed vision for a political resolution to the conflict. It added that the parties must put the interest of the Yemeni people first and seize this opportunity to help bring this conflict to an end. For its part, the British Embassy in Yemen affirmed that the UK stands with the international community in full support for UN-launched peace consultations. It reiterated that the UN Envoy's new framework will offer a wide range of political and social groups an opportunity to discuss renewed visions for an inclusive political resolution. The British Embassy called on all Yemeni parties to constructively engage in a new round of peace consultations. Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Yemen, Peter Derek Hoff, conducted a visit to Ras Isa in front of the safer oil tanker. He stressed the importance of tackling the impending SFO crisis in a way that results in the least environmental and economic damage. I'm here at Ras Isa, and eight kilometers behind me, barely visible, is the FSO Safar, a tanker containing 1.1 million barrels of oil. Has not received maintenance in over seven years. It's a ticking time bomb, a grave threat to the environment of the Red Sea, a grave threat to the Yemeni people, the livelihood of fishermen, the humanitarian operation of the United Nations, and the shipping here in the Red Sea, Bab al-Mandeb Strait. We as the Netherlands are committed to support the United Nations in finding a solution to take away this grave threat to the people of Yemen. We're willing to support. That's why I've come to Yemen. That's why I've visited Sana'a. That's why I'm visiting Hodeida and Ras Isa. And hopefully, 
with the help of the international community, we can solve the problem. Yemeni Prime Minister requested international support for government reform efforts in order to achieve economic stability. During his meeting with Assistant Director of the UN Development Programme, he reiterated the importance of turning to development instead of depending on relief aids. The Prime Minister discussed with the UN official the humanitarian, economic and development situation in Yemen and the ongoing arrangements for the Humanitarian Response Conference in March 16. The war in Ukraine has drawn the international community's attention to the Yemeni crisis. However, Western media, which dictates Western attitudes, reflects a different level of compassion for Ukrainian refugees. More details are in the following report. War brings out the worst of human instincts of killing, destroying and inflicting pain. The global spotlight on Ukraine is valid. However, there's no denying that the escalating and devastating war in Yemen hasn't received the attention it needs. Yemen is one of the Arab world's poorest countries that has been devastated by a civil war. The UN for long has described it as the world's worst humanitarian crisis and it's deepening day after day. The situation in Yemen, Syria and Libya has been going on till now. But as we have seen in the last days, the reporting by many in the Western media has revealed their racist views of the world. Many reporters are surprised at the events because according to them, war was only supposed to happen in uncivilized countries of Asia and Africa. This is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. This isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. Having empathy should be towards any human and not based on their race or nationality. Ukrainians trying to flee from the Russian invasion is as much important as the internally displaced people. The IDPs in Yemen get less attention than those who are able to reach the borders. The point is not to deny any support to the vulnerable Ukrainians, but extend the same level of support, kindness, respect and empathy to all forcibly displaced people. As the developed Europe's Ukraine war gains international attention, the war devastation in Yemen has enough for the world to wake up and give more attention to Yemen and prevent what is left from bombing, hunger and death. A parliamentary committee carried out a field visit to the fighting front south of Meherb Governorate. The committee was informed with combat operations and the conditions of the fighters in various fronts. The committee called on the Yemeni people to reject the militia's attempts to mobilize their sons to achieve its goals. Informed sources in Sana'a said the Houthi rebels failed to gather fighters to the fronts. The sources added that the rebels had launched a recruitment campaign in order to attract new fighters. The sources reported that the Houthis' efforts were met with reluctance and disregard by the population in several neighborhoods in Sana'a. Houthi militia has imposed fines on private school students in the areas under its control. According to educational sources, the militia asked directors of private schools to collect donations in light of policies to destroy education, while cutting teachers' salaries to push them to the fighting fronts. Turning to the military scene in Yemen, the coalition announced that it carried out 12 airstrikes on militia sites in the governors of Al Jauf and Hajjah during the past 24 hours. The coalition confirmed that the operations resulted in the killing and wounding of dozens of Houthis and the destruction of seven military vehicles. In addition, the government forces liberated new sites in Sada governorate. Unmanned aerial vehicles or drones have altered the dynamics on the battlefield in the Middle East. Exporting countries have expanded low-cost drone production. In response, some Arab nations are rapidly developing their own drone fleets. Non-state actors and terrorists are also benefiting from drones, which pose a threat in and outside conflict zones. The following report has more details. The Middle East is undergoing a major geopolitical shift, the advent of the drone. Unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, have changed the military dynamics for countries like Syria, Libya, Yemen, and Iraq. UAVs have allowed cities to advance their foreign policy agenda despite economic constraints. Non-state actors have also benefited greatly from the drone revolution since they have the capacity to employ new tactics and strategies against nation-states. 
Due to their agility and affordability, drones aren't simply a threat to remote combat zones. They're also a threat to states far away from battlegrounds. Drone technology is used by non-state groups such as the Iran-backed Houthis in Yemen and Hezbollah in Lebanon to further their political goals and warfare operations. Drones have offered a significant boost to Iran's air power and its regional allies in the years following the Iranian Revolution. In January 2022, for example, the Houthis conducted a drone assault deep within the UAE in retribution for its troops' advances against Houthi-held territory in Yemen. While the Houthi drone strike caused only little physical damage, it demonstrated the Houthis' warfare expertise and tarnished the UAE's image as a safe haven in an otherwise war-torn region. The country's economy and role as a trading hub would be influenced by perceptions of Emirati vulnerability. Because of the UAE's strategic location in the Arabian Gulf and its fight against the Houthis in Yemen, Abu Dhabi has prioritized the development of strong, dynamic military forces. The UAE used their technological expertise, solid economy, and developing military and security ties to build a robust drone industry and equip Abu Dhabi with regional strategic depth. The world must develop a collective preventative strategy to curb the threat of extremist groups such as the Iran-backed Houthis getting hold of such advanced weaponry. Coming next. On the International Women's Day, Yemeni women, due to war, have nothing to celebrate. On International Women's Day, Yemeni women have nothing to celebrate but more hunger, forced displacement and sexual violence since the Houthi coup. The U.S. Agency for International Development in Yemen also revealed that the Houthi militia is blocking programs and efforts to promote gender equality. More details on this are in the following report. As the International Women's Day come, we observe the world's celebration and appreciation to women for bearing burdens of life and leading the community in so many societies. As without the inclusion of women in every field, the planet will lack justice and mitigation. However, after eight years of the Yemeni war, one could say that Yemeni women are still facing a lot of suffering due to the impact of the conflict, either directly or indirectly. In this occasion, I send my heartfelt greetings to all Yemeni women and girls. Unfortunately, Eight years of conflict has aggravated gender inequality in Yemen. According to the United Nations, the conflict has worsened the situation for women in Yemen, as 63% are exposed to violence and assaults by the Houthi militia. International Rescue Committee added that adolescent girls, single and divorced women are considered as the most vulnerable people in Yemen. The United Nations Population Fund has announced that Yemeni females are exposed to gender-based violence in which 50% are exposed to physical assault and 35% of Yemeni women are exposed to sexual abuse followed by child marriage for girls who were out of school due to the ongoing conflict. But we also recognize that in too many areas the clock on women's rights is moving backwards. The pandemic has kept girls and women out of schools and workplaces. They face rising poverty and rising violence. 
They do the vast majority of the world's unpaid but essential care work. They are targets of violence and abuse just because of their gender. According to Motna Organization for Human Rights, violations of women's rights in healthy controlled areas grew more acute last year. And they added that the situation is bad for women all over Yemen, but it's worse in areas under healthy control. Director of the Women Research and Training Center at Aden University stated that because Yemen is a conservative society, survivors of violence are led to believe that it's better for them to stay silent and conceal their pain. Women's suffering didn't stop there, as the war has deprived the Yemeni women of the political representation and decision-making, as these positions are confined to men, and barely can women participate in the political process, which has increased the gap in gender-based equality in Yemen. The UN Special Envoy Secretary stressed on Yemeni women leadership in peacemaking and their meaningful participation in decisions about the future of their country and how critical it is for effective peace agreements. Deputy Head of the European Union to Yemen added, Participation of women and men is essential to achieving peace and sustainable development in Yemen. The United Nations declared that lack of food aid affects millions of families in Yemen. The World Food Programme stated that people are waiting in long queues to receive food aid in the Arab governorate. It warned that food prices continue to rise and that cuts in food aid are devastating for millions whose survival depends on assistance. The Yemeni Riyal suffered today a new loss against foreign currencies in Aden. Banking sources in Aden said that the Yemeni Riyal suffered a new loss as the value of buying one US dollar rose to 1,254 Riyals. The sources confirmed that the losses have continued over the past few days, coinciding with a continuous rise in the prices of commodities, materials and food, amid popular fears of the continuing rise in prices. Aden Refinery Union declared a new work strike, aggravating the current fuel crisis. Most of the gas stations closed their doors this morning. The union announced the strike is due to a number of demands, such as restarting the refinery and completing the project to rehabilitate the refinery's power plant. Yemenis are struggling to secure their medicines amidst the spread of communicable and chronic diseases. Many citizens in Lahj Governorate have complained about the high prices of medicine and the variation in prices from one place to another in addition to the inaccessibility and unaffordability of medicines for chronic diseases. More details are in the following report. Like other Yemeni patients, Abdul Majid, one of the sons of the governor of Lash, suffers from the scourge of war and its dark consequences that have ravaged the country for seven years and also crushing people's hopes and aspirations to cast its gravest darkness on the shoulders of the Yemeni citizens, especially the sick. <laughs> We have patients with chronic diseases, and we suffer a lot from the increasing prices of medicines. We call on authorities to follow up this matter, as cutting off the salaries with the increasing prices and currency rates, all this add an extra burden on the Yemeni citizen. We cannot afford buying medicines for ourselves or our families that we require daily, weekly or monthly. Suffering is most severe in the lives of citizens and patients in particular, as a result of the rise in the prices of medicines and the manipulation of their prices, whether during the recovery of the local currency or its decline, the situation remains as it is. But the prices are rising without taking into account the conditions and circumstances of the patients. The medicines are very expensive. Can you imagine that this antibiotic given to a three years old child only for three days costs 2,000 reals? Few days ago, I got half a box for 6,000 reals, an antibiotic only 10 pills for 6,000 reals. That's very expensive. We don't know if it's an international increase like what happened with food supplies. These days, everything is very expensive. All prices are increasing madly. The rising prices in the market are due to the high exchange rates and the deterioration of the national currency. Pharmaceutical companies increase the prices of medicines, and it costs us more. So accordingly, we had to increase it too. There is a real crisis. Citizens are struggling, especially those suffering from chronic diseases, as diabetes and blood pressure. 
The absence of oversight and the greed of merchants compounded the problem and exacerbated the suffering further. But the owners of pharmacies refer this to the pharmaceutical companies, so that the patient's condition remains in a constant struggle. Misery, pain and deprivation triple miserable lives of citizens and patients, especially those with chronic diseases so that the humanitarian message remains absent, with the greed of merchants and the absence of the responsibility of the concerned authorities that made the helpless and poor citizen live in confusion and wait for a relief. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. Special Envoy Hans Grunberg initiates consultations on his new peace framework. Western media bias over Ukraine crisis turns objective journalism into myth. Government forces liberate new areas in Sada and inflict losses on Houthi militia. This is the end of the news. For more, follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube at Yemen Today English. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.